Hi, everyone. Welcome to another amazing topic of conversation. I want to thank my sponsors, the Health Channel. So please join their newsletter for everything regarding health and wellness. And for working spaces, whether it's virtual or an actual space, please go to Alexa's workspaces and then and a resource page of anything you want beyond Aventura, a Facebook page, Aventura Moms. So Julia, welcome. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for having me, Gladys. This is no, really exciting. It is a pleasure. <laughs> and thank you for doing this. I know scheduling is a little <laughs> weird. <laughs> Well, yeah, with the time zone. You were having your coffee in the morning. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? We we worked it out. We can do hard things. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking money today, especially women. What took you or what happened that you went into really empowering women to generate wealth? Uh, right. Okay. Well, I it all started. Um, I have a career um, before children as an accountant and financial advisor, and um, so I was really good at money. Right. I, I I told other people how to manage their money all the time, and then um, I got married. You know, my partner, my husband, was an accountant as well, and um, you know, I, I just had this dream of being being a, a, a wife and a mother and. I did all those things. And then um, one day the marriage wasn't working and um, I had to leave. And I realized very quickly that I'd given away all of my power, financial power to, and independence to my husband because I, um, I didn't even have a bank account in my own name. Everything was being run through our family trust and through him. I wasn't even a director which is ridiculous now in hindsight yeah. and I've never advised my clients to be in that situation. But, you know, you, when you're in love, you trust and um, there's nothing no, wrong with they, trust. Didn't you like have a co-signature? or A co-signature? No, nothing. Nothing. He opened everything uh, and... Yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. And... Um, and that worked during our marriage, but then when I went to leave, um, obviously I didn't have any authority on anything and uh, it was very difficult with the financial settlement, number one, to find where what our financial position was and um, number two, to get access to money while we were in litigation until we were through our divorce. So um, there's that aspect of women handing their power over to men. Um, you know, we, we all want to be in love and trust our partner, but really um, it, just like it, you can't leave all the love up to one partner, you really should not leave all of the financial decisions up to one partner as well. We, it's like a partnership, you know, and we both have, just yeah. like you, we both do the love part, you both should be involved in the financial future part as well even though one might be earning the money and one might be at home, um, it's still... But wait, so you had uh, no idea where the money went or how the money was invested? Like no. That, you were clueless? No, no yeah, clueless. Um, I had whatever I wanted. I had um, a number of credit cards and I would just buy whatever I wanted and um, there was never seemed to be any problem. Um, and... Yeah, it just, it was such a, you can imagine going from having whatever you want to, you know, nothing. Like I had to go on your equivalent of social security just to be able to, um, you know, feed my children, put put gas in the car so that uh, until I got to court and was able to settle everything. So it was quite traumatic and overwhelming and um, frightening for a woman, you know. Um so I don't ever want a woman to be in that position because let's face it, nobody knows what the future holds and um, you just need to be, you know, prepared 
for things like this. It's just, I think it's irresponsible not to pay attention to where things are. So I really feel passionate about inspiring women to strike up conversations with their partner about money and their financial future. Um, and even if they're not with a partner to sort of get more confident and um, know how to manage their own money better and how to plan for their financial future. Um, there's so much you can do. There's so many easy things that you can do. And we don't get taught this at school. So I think it's a very important topic. Um, there's, and then there's also the conditioning of women. You know, for hundreds of years, we have, we, we didn't even have to care of. Yes. And, um, you know, you, you think about, I know my mother, um, up until the early 80s here in Australia, she couldn't even get a credit card without um, her husband co-signing the application. Um, that's not that long ago. My mother used to have her own private account. Okay. That's good. That, yeah. Very good. That's how I learned to have my own account. But did she have her own, um, you know, was she able to access debt and um, loans yes. and things like that? She oh, was great. able to. She was able to access that. She was taught that by her mother. Okay. So, yes, okay. we have been taught all that. But this is what the power of the heel stands for. Financial yes. education and financial yes. independence. Yeah, a lot of women don't have that and didn't have a mother to teach them that. Um, and they, they definitely didn't get taught um, that kind of stuff at school. So this is why it's just so important. It's such a, money is involved in all aspects of life um, and focusing on money is not a bad thing. It's oh. quite empowering um, because if you have more money and more wealth, then you can help more people and you have the ability to share that wealth. And this is what women do best, actually. We're wired to nurture and collaborate. So this is why we need more wealthy women because we do wonderful things with money. And also we invest it back in the community, in education, in resources for all the community. Yes. Most so definitely. Yeah, there's... um. I was listening to a talk from the founder of Thank You Water. Do you have that over in the States? It's um, it's water in bottles called Thank You. And, and a certain um, portion of all the sales goes to charities to help um, clean, to find clean water sources for third world countries. Okay, so I he, he, I haven't heard of it, but there's a lot of those. Like, for example, there's, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of companies that really, really have a big corporate social responsibility and give back. Yes. So um, he was the founder of that and it's done very, very well. Like there's a lot of money goes through that. But they found that when they were giving back to the communities in these um, impoverished villages, um, at they were teaching them how to build their own wells to find, find clean water um, so that they've they would always be you know healthy and they found if they taught the men the men would find these get these engineering type skills and then they would leave and they would go somewhere else and make money with it but so then they started teaching the women they started teaching the the grandmothers specifically and the mothers how to um, build these wells and the skill set that they need because they weren't going to leave the village and all of that knowledge wasn't going to leave because they're tied to the village exactly. because we're nurturers and collaborators. We're just wired differently. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with, um, I'm, I'm definitely not against men. We, we need um, those different kind of... Um, no, it is a partnership with men, but, but women tend to be more collaborative and give up and give more. Yes, exactly. Um, and then that kind of brings us to the point that sometimes women overgive when it comes to money and um, they put other people before themselves all the time. So we've got to be aware of that and um, we've got to have build our own um, self-worth and understand that um, by helping ourselves, it is not selfish because it means that we can help more people in the future. 
Well, it's like in the airplanes. When you go in the airplane and they say that if masks are needed, you put your mask before, you put yes. yourself the mask and then help others. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the Definitely. best example. Yeah, yeah. So um, women have got to get better at all of this. Um, now, I think there's just so many um, things that women can do better when it comes to money. And I think the biggest thing is um, understanding that they are just as deserving as any other human on the planet of building wealth. And the only thing that's usually stopping them is their mindset and their um, beliefs about what's possible for them. So I think that's massive for our next generation of um, of women and the current generations, of course, uh, it's never too late to build wealth. It's never too late to find other ways to make money. Um, there's always a way. There is an unlimited supply of money out there available in the world. All you need to do is find a way to add value to other people's lives. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the traditional masculine ways. It can be through, um, you know, the female skill sets. It, you know, I've seen there are people out there who have are making um, millions with online programs about how to drink more water or like just, you know, cooking and, you know, how, how to how to clean differently and how to, um, you know, how to start a business, how, you know, all of this stuff. There's so much you can do and everyone always has more knowledge than they think because it comes easily to them and they forget that not everyone has that. No, you're totally right. It's, I love what you said, like creating a mindset. Yeah. And it's I so think that getting educated. Yeah, yeah, getting educated. But you know what? I think there are so many books out there um, right now on how to make money from money or how to, you know, just, you know, come up with an idea to do a business it's really not that hard and their books all say the same thing but just in a different tone um but to me how most women are, pardon how do you do it how do I do it well like I, I think well, well first of all I think that most people don't even pick up those books because they think that's for other people that's not for me and that's my point that's where the mindset comes in because if you don't believe it, really believe that it's possible for you to have a different financial reality, then you won't because your thoughts create your reality. It's quantum mechanics. Like this is all, there's a lot of science behind this. It's not, um, it's not woo-woo. It's not just wishful thinking. If you don't think you can do it, you won't do it. You won't pick up that book. Um, you won't take action and follow the instructions in the book. Um, you will just keep going around in the pattern that you're going because you're like, oh, it's too hard. It's never going to work. Um, that's for other people. This is one of the biggest mindset blocks for a lot of women is because they think they're different. In what but sense? really, we have, what, sorry? In what sense that they think in they're what different? Sense? Because like I... Because we've been conditioned to, I mean, I know um, here in Australia, especially, we've been conditioned that the men are the ones who make the money and um, the women are seen as being a bit indecisive or, um, you know, we, we, we don't want to get things wrong, right? We have this need for perfectionism. Perfect. And, yeah, and let's face it, that goes back you got to all this. Um, if you go back hundreds of years, it's all in our DNA and our ancestry. All this trauma that women have experienced, where if they made a mistake, if you got pregnant when you weren't supposed to um, two hundred years ago, you're in a <laughs> your life was at stake. You know because how were you going to survive? Um, and all of that, those survival mechanisms are still at play in our subconscious and um, we need to become aware of them and realize that our life isn't at stake any, anymore. There's lots of support systems for women um, and you don't have to be perfect and you can afford to make mistakes, but you're, you're not, because you're going to make mistakes because if you, if you try something different, 
you're not going to be perfect at it the first go. You have know, to be perfect. It's, it's like, like you said before, we're wired that we need yeah. to know everything before we get into something. And men are not like that. They just jump into it. Yeah, they just do it. You know, they, if, if they're going for a job interview and they only meet like 30% of the requirements on the skill set for the job interview, they they're going to say, I can do this. Whereas yeah. women, unless they meet like, you know, 80%, they're not, they're definitely not going to say they can do it. We're just wired very differently because I think things have been different for us, you know, uh, over, you know, as, as we've, in the social conditioning and, and that's so important because this is what sets up your belief systems and your coding so to speak about what you think is possible for you so we need to break through that and we need to help women understand that you've just got to have a go because if you don't try to get your money sorted or try to get become financially independent or even know what that will look like like a lot of women don't even know what financial independence looks like for them. Like the, one of the most important things that you need when you're starting to put together a financial plan for yourself is to know where do I want to be in five to 10 years time? What does that look like? And be able to articulate that and articulate it confidently and clearly. And most women can't do that. Correct. Most women they just freeze. <laughs> They're like, oh, like I just as long as everyone's happy and my family's healthy, it doesn't matter. But it does matter. Like no, because it is. I remember, I remember when my father-in-law died, my mother-in-law didn't know what a check was. Oh yeah. See, these are these are the kinds of things. Yeah. And yeah. she was lost. Yes. Definitely. So it was like depending on everybody else to take care of you. Yes. And if Which... we don't get educated, we're never going to break or disrupt the poverty cycle. No, yeah, we we need we need to do that. So um the education part is like super important. It's an absolute must. Um but like allow get excited about being educated because a lot of, like I said, a lot of women don't even, they don't really believe it's possible. They might just go through the motions and go, okay, I'll go, I'll, I'll read this book or I'll do that, but they won't actually do what the book says because they're like, but this is never going to work. Um, deep down, you know, you, you have to tap into that, like what's stopping me? Like, do I really believe this is possible for, for me? And let's face it, if you don't have the kind of bank account that you um, desire, you, you have a money block. It's as simple as that because there is so much money available in the world, really. Like there are people who are making like billions just off ideas. Like if you, you read this in the in the newspaper, you see all the all the new young rich listers coming, the up and coming ones, and it's all through um IP and um, software programs and things and it's more based on ideas that add value to people's lives and anyone can come up with an idea but you need to be able to um, open your mind up enough to allow those ideas to come through and stop filtering them with this that won't work does that make sense no I totally get it yesterday we were reading a story about a Chinese girl that decided to quit her job and do TikTok videos. And she was hired by an agency and she made like triple in the first yeah. month of what she made in her job. Yeah. And her family was like going, how would you quit? Why? That's a big risk. And that is the problem that you need to be able to take risks. Definitely. And men do risks really well. They're wired for that. You know, they're wired to go into battle and just, um, you know, fight, you know, and push through. Whereas we're, we're wired to sort of keep everyone happy, calm, um, make sure everyone's fed, like, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want 
to have financial independence and you don't want to be reliant on a man to um, look after you for the rest of your life, um, then you need to step up and you need to do something different. If you want a different outcome, you need to do a different thing. You know, you're not going to get a different outcome doing the same thing you've always done. You've got to change it up. So um, just start. I think the biggest thing that you, that women can do is to start keeping a journal and actually write down what their ideal life looks like, right? And, and that have no limits on it. Like if if anything was possible for you and you knew you couldn't fail, what would you be doing? What What is that? Yeah, and and what it might take a while. You were not afraid. What will you do if you're not afraid? And um, it might take a while for it to come through. Like you might have to do it sort of, you know, five or six times for you to actually get through to what's really, what your soul really does desire. Another way that you can work out what your potential is, is by um, identifying who you're who you're inspired by in life, who's your favourite people, whether it's somebody in your immediate circle or a celebrity or a sports star or something or Oprah, like what what, what is it that you see in that person? What are their values that you um, desire, you admire in them, right? Because sometimes even jealousy can actually be a good guidance system because it's showing you that you you that's triggering you because that's what you want and that's lacking currently in your life so you can either just get upset about it and angry about it or you can do something about it and that means um elevating your skill sets um coming up with you know brainstorming ideas on get, getting all this information out of your um your soul and onto paper you, you're just by writing stuff down about what you want, they've done studies and it says that you're 42% more likely to reach your goal just by writing it down and reviewing it regularly because you need to acclimatise your brain to these new financial goals of where you, where you want to go in life. And then once your brain sees it written down, it's like almost like a shopping list. You know, um, it happens to me all the time. I write out a shopping list at home and then I get to the to the supermarket and I've left the list at home. But because I've written it down, it's in my mind. And remember you know, some. You always and I remember like 90% thing. of the stuff anyway. Um, but if I hadn't written it down at home, if I um oh, no. if I had just sort of thought to myself, I need this, this, and this, I won't remember any of that at the supermarket, you know. It's really powerful to write stuff down. But I remember that my dad used to be very intrigued about a study, and I'm talking years ago, so I don't even remember who the study was, but he read what was the link between what was the link between the what was the link between the millionaires? And the one yes. link between all of them, the one link between all of them was that they all wanted to be a millionaire. Yes. That yes. So they have the yes. that yeah. was the common denominator in all yeah. of them. They all wanted it. Yes. And and, and this is this is another thing. Like you, you um you, you, pain is a bigger driver for you to make change in your life than passion will ever be. Unfortunately, that's the way we're wired as humans. So um, work out what your um, life, what, what your pain point is to help you to move forward, right? So what what if you kept going, doing what you were always doing um, and being, you know, if you're not happy with your financial decision, um, position at the moment if you kept going with that life and if it was 10 years in the future or even 20 years in the future what would your life look like it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse because you're not growing right you, you're just in this same cycle and you're not going anywhere financially so use that as a driver to help you to find the courage 
to do something different, to not follow what you should do from everyone around you, because that's, um, it's your life. It's not their life. And if you, you, what do you want? You know, follow your desires, tap into your soul on what you, what actually, why you're here. And as long as you're, um, they say, if you do something you love, you'll always make money. Right. But it's that, it's going through the change to do something different, to have the courage to follow that passion um, that is going to be the biggest catalyst for your, um, for, for this change, change to actually happen. Yeah, um, because change is hard. I always um, have mantras as well. Like I use them every day and I write them, like I've got some written on my windows here. I don't know if you can see in pink writing. Yeah. And I, I, there's heaps of them over here. Into a way of the post-its. <laughs> Yes, yes, I write them everywhere. I write them on my bathroom mirror. I have them on my phone as screensavers and on my computer. Um, and it'll be things like change is good. I love change, you know, because you, 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 you're informing your brain that change is a or good you thing. you challenge yourself every day. Yeah, challenge myself every day and say things like um, uh, things are always working out for me. So that helps you to trust your decisions or I am decisive. Um, I am a wealthy woman to acknowledge the wealth that you currently have in your life because I guarantee you, you have so much more than many other people in the world. No matter, even if you don't think you have much, I guarantee you, you have a lot more than other people. There are so many people in the world who um, don't have anything, you know, they're like on a dollar a day or they're missing limbs and things like we're already way ahead and having gratitude for what you have right now, whatever you focus on grows and you'll get more and more and more. This whole um, energetic aspect to money is um, I have grown to um, love and find this so Crazy. powerful. Yeah, because this is what helped me to get out, out of my rut because I was incredibly depressed when I went through my divorce. I thought, oh, my God, my life is over. I couldn't think straight because when you're in stress, your IQ drops by like almost half. You cannot make it a good a good decision. So I, I worked really hard by reading so many self-help books, learning how to meditate, all that kind of stuff, learning to tap into why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? And then I got loud and clear that, you know, to educate and um, inspire women to be better at money because it's such a useful tool to bring about positive change in the world and to... Um, live the life you're meant to lead there's yeah there's so much you can do so I, I really do recommend everyone writes down their goals um and, and think as big as possible right allow yourself to think as big as possible and you can change it as many times as you want there's no goal police so don't think like once you do it that's it and it's you can't nice. do anything yeah yeah you if, have if you something really interesting and before we go I want you to talk about the morning personality quiz what is that oh yeah yeah sure so on my website at loveluckwealth.com um, there is a free quiz that anyone can take on there and it's to identify your unique money personality so that is how you make your financial decisions and mo more importantly it's what your challenges are when it comes to making financial decisions what your shadow side is so once you become aware of what that is like you might be somebody I know I am an accumulator which is somebody who it sounds good on paper because there's someone who loves to um, save money and um, accumulate money but um, the problem with accumulators is they get too controlling of their money and they and they hoard it and they don't Put it out in the world to go to work right because your money wants to be put to use all the time and um so for me i'm constantly having to remind myself um of these innate money blocks that i have where um i overanalyze um investment opportunities or opportunities to um you know 
hire new people or, 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 or pay for new programs to help my business. I need, I was because used to be, I used to overanalyze it all. But right? you, went and I, through, you went through a lot, so it's not overanalyzing. I think well, it's being cautious. Yes, but I was overly cautious and it was stopping okay. me. I was missing those opportunities because I would take so long to analyze things to make sure I was getting the best deal. Um, and it's exhausting, right? So once I let go of a lot of that, um, I could make financial decisions faster and I had more um, capacity in my brain available to make decisions about actually making bringing the money in rather than um, worrying about how it's going out because if you're whatever you're focused on is what grows so if you're constantly worrying about what how much is going out you will always be worrying about how much is going out and you will never have enough if you focus on always bringing more in um, that's a great focus to have because you know you're never limited as to how much can come in right we want to live a life of abundance not scarcity so okay. find out what your money personality is there's eight different types and um, everybody you know one is not better than another uh, you will find out what your natural gifts are um, and your strengths so that you can play to them and then you can protect yourself um, from your shadow side yeah Thank you. Thank you. I so know much. that we, if we had more time, we can stay here talking about all the personalities. So yes, we're going to go and take your personality quiz. And thank you so so much. It was really a pleasure. And to everyone, until next week, and above all, stay safe. Have stay a great safe. evening. Stay safe. Thank you, Gladys. <laughs>